How's it going, guys? It's 2.27 a.m. Friday, June 9th here in Japan. Medium to difficult question, pulmonary step one. Medium difficulty question, pediatrics 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical. MHL man underscore medical. Links down below for me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group channel down below in this with clip. Four-month-old boy who was born at 26 weeks gestation, spent two months in ICU receiving oxygen nutritional support. He's now on home oxygen. He's at the fifth percentile for length and weight. ECG shows right axis deviation allowed P2 is heard on chest auscultation. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for these findings. Then we have some obscure slash nebulous chest x-ray where we say no idea what we're fucking looking at, all right? So let's just whip the answer choice here. Choice A, acrocyanosis, wrong fucking answer. However, you need to know this for step two where I've seen this as a correct answer straight up. You just need to know that bluish tinge of the extremities is normal following parturition. Okay, so we talk about the APGAR scores, A for appearance, where the child will, will receive a two for pink coloration throughout, one for acrocyanosis, just bluish discoloration of the extremities, uh, and zero for fully blue. Okay, so they want you to know the next best step is place the child under warming lights, followed by tactile stimulation. I've seen them assess both of those two separate questions. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, correct answer. You need to know that this is a restrictive lung disease that can occur in uh, children under the age of one, secondary to excessive oxygen exposure in the neonatal period. So here, I mean, we basically hand it to you by saying that the kid was born uh, 26 weeks gestation, was on oxygen ICU, is now on home oxygen. So oxygen can cause bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Okay, it's a restrictive lung disease. The alveoli are very sensitive to high oxygen tension, okay? So children who do have to receive oxygen, we want uh, the minimal oxygen saturation necessary around 92, 93%, because obviously if you get up to 100% oxygen saturation hemoglobin, obviously that's good, but not when we're trying to prevent bronchopulmonary dysplasia. The same deal for retinopathy of prematurity, okay? Give you the same fucking vignette here, and then just say something about visual problems, and you would need to know that that's retinopathy of prematurity if a child is exposed to uh, too much oxygen, okay? So you can also get germinal matrix bleeds or uh, uh, intraventricular hemorrhages with too much oxygen exposure. Chest x-ray here, I just jacked this off of Wikipedia, okay? I mean, it's uh, showing us apparently a ground glass appearance. So you don't need to know the x-ray. I was just throwing this in here to be a flagrant asshole. So... Let's just quickly whip through the other answer choices. Choice C, highland membrane disease, wrong fucking answer, aka neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, NRDS, will be a kid born under 34 weeks gestation generally. So obviously under 37 is preterm, but it's kids under 34 weeks especially because uh, women born, or women born, what the fuck am I saying? Children born to women uh, prior to 34 weeks, uh, those Pregnant women need two boluses of corticosteroids, which they assess on the 2CK material. And I made other clips talking about that. Under 32 weeks, they'll get magnesium tangentially. Uh, but uh, NRDS, you're talking about the lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio, aka dipalmatoyl phosphatidylcholine to sphingomyelin ratio. They want you to know uh, the, the, those names, okay? Very uh, cumbersome to say. And the ratio should be greater than 2 to 2.4. So... Uh, without surfactant, you're going to have increased elastic recoil. So uh, surfactant hydrophobic, and it will prevent the collapsing of the alveolar uh, the alveolar spaces unto themselves. Okay, so the alveoli without surfactant, there's too much hydrophilic interaction, increased elastic recoil. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, immature lower esophageal sphincter, wrong fucking answer. I mean... I mean, it's not even related to pulmonary. Just threw this in here as a nonsense distractor, but I've seen them assess this, okay? You need to know pediatric GERD is a thing. I've seen two questions on it. So they'll throw it in, try to confuse you with stuff like pyloric stenosis or uh, tracheoesophageal fistula, et cetera. And what they'll say for pediatric GERD is that the kid simply coughs up uh, small amounts of milk uh, two to three times daily, not necessarily with feeds. Okay, so uh, whereas pyloric stenosis, in contrast, is forceful projectile non-bilious vomiting, right, or duodenal atresia is going to be a bilious vomiting, or if you have tracheoesophageal fistula, you'll have coughing up 
uh, with the very first feed, okay? Uh, the second question I saw was just, they said there was grade four reflux in a child and they wanted fundoplication, Neeson fundoplication for peds surgery. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice Z, transient tachypnean, the newborn, wrong fucking answer. So T, TN, I've made clips on this as well. Uh, this is going to be the answer when the vignette sounds like NRDS, okay? It sounds like you got a neonate in respiratory distress, but they're going to say the kid was born at term. And it will almost always be due to C-section, okay? In real life, it can be fast vaginal delivery, but I knew a similar it'll be C-section in a term neonate. And you need to know it's just decreased time for pulmonary lymphatics to clear amniotic fluid out of the lungs. In addition to if you're born by C-section, then there's less of a squeezing action uh, to squeeze amniotic fluid out of the lungs. Chest x-ray will show uh, fluid within fissure lines. Okay, for hyaline membrane disease, NRDS, they'll say uh, chest x-ray shows uh, reticulogranular pattern. Okay, not to be confused with the reticulonodular, which reflects uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or pulmonary fibrosis just in uh, older patients. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.